How do you become a full stack C Sharp developer? What tools, languages, and frameworks do you need to know to get started? In this video, we're going to look over some options you have as a C Sharp developer and look at what you'll need to know for each. Then tomorrow, I'm going to issue a challenge that will test your full stack C Sharp skills. All right. So before we dive in, though, I want to talk about three things that I think are important. First of all, if you want to learn more about C Sharp, this is the place to be. So make sure you subscribe to this channel. Second, if you want more free resources, go to imtimcorey.com and go to the resources tab. And three, if you want to go deeper into something in C Sharp or C Sharp related, check out imtimcorey.com and the courses I had to offer there. Not only will you receive a world-class education in C Sharp, but you'll also help fund my free content so that everyone can have a great education in C Sharp, not just those who can afford it. So let's jump right in. And if you follow along with the previous two, the, the front end demo and the back end demo, you will have seen pretty much, you know, what a full stack developer needs to know. You have to kind of crunch those two together, right? Like you're, you're doing both, but I think there's a way to do this in a, in a way that would be uh, more efficient for you and would be more focused on the things that are going to be important to know uh, deeper as well as the things that you have to know, just at least at a surface level to, you know, make it through the entire stack. So let's, let's talk about a new project and we'll call this, um, well, let's first start with, um, you know, we're going to do an API project first. So let's, let's clear out our filters here. Let's, uh, go back to all product types and C sharp, but we'll do the API project and we'll call this API and full stack demo and leave all the defaults. And so I think the first place to start, of course, is to learn C sharp and learn that really well. We, we've talked before about how the fact that even if you're a front end developer of C sharp, you need to know C sharp first. And if you're a back end developer, you need to know C sharp first and very deeply. And so as a full stack developer, you kind of have to mix those two, which means you have to learn C sharp first and learn it deeply. But there are areas of C sharp that you should probably concentrate on. And one of them, I think the biggest one is the API project type. So knowing this will really allow you to, uh, create both front ends and back ends effectively and be more efficient as you do so. And, and the reason why here is we've got a lot to learn, a lot to cover, but if you learn the API project type, well, then you can support mobile applications and client side desk or client side web applications and desktop applications and services and microservices and all these other things all at once. You can support all of these using an API and this allows you to have a, a similar or the same back end for all these different projects because you're going through an API. So knowing how to build an API is going to be a big deal for you. Now you should also know some front ends. So knowing how to build a desktop app and knowing how to build a web app are important. Again, if we want to see, you know, what's the shortcut, what's the, what's the first place to learn that way you can be full stack quicker and then add to it as you go. Well, I think the, the solution there is that I would recommend learning blazer. And in this case, I chose blazer server, but there's also blazer web assembly and with .NET 8, I think this becomes even more valuable because with .NET 8, we're going to get server side rendering and we're going to get the ability to change versions of Blazor behind the scenes and even mix Blazor types in the same application. So knowing how to work with Blazor allows you to have pretty much the entire web structure covered, whether it's entirely server side rendered or entirely client side rendered or that mix of both Blazor server, they're all covered. But more than that, let's just um, say Blazor server here. But more than that, you'll also be able to move into the mobile space more easily as well, because the fact that you'll have the ability to use Blazor hybrid. So the same language, the same syntax and the same, even a lot of the same components can be used for 
desktop applications, web applications, and mobile applications. So if we were to create a Blazor hybrid project, let's do that now. So we're gonna search for uh, Maui right there. And we have .NET Maui Blazor app, which is also known as a Blazor hybrid app. So we'll say uh, Blazor hybrid and .NET 7. And if we look at the code for this, well, we come down here to um, our pages and this page right here, that's the counter page, which we come up to our, or down to our Blazor server page and go to the counter page. That's the counter page. These two look almost identical. So knowing how to use, do Blazor is kind of a shortcut that allows you to do mobile native applications and desktop applications with on uh, Windows and Mac and also do web applications and even then progressive web applications for offline web applications. There's, there's so many things you can do with that one set of syntax, that one structure, that one design. So you're still learning HTML and CSS and a little JavaScript, but you're, you're using Blazor to kind of shortcut all the different ways you can go in one package. So it makes your life a little easier. Now, again, I would not encourage you to stop there unless of course you get a job there and you're going to be focused on that for a while, but I would encourage you to branch out and touch on, you know, WPF or um, other XAML based applications and um, then look at .NET MAUI as well as other options for mobile space. But this Blazor allows you to shortcut a lot of this. And then when you use a couple of API, well, now you have the full stack and it's really two different things you have to learn. It's, well, you have to learn web, so you have to learn HTML and CSS, but it's web and it's the Blazor syntax and API syntax, and that's really it. So you've got a really quick way to get to full stack. And then from there, you can add more things or change more things or um, add more um, understanding of, of broader project types. For instance, if you want to get into microservices, well, you're going to do a lot of work with APIs or maybe you know minimal APIs, especially because that's usually what microservices leans on is that this micro API structure or Azure Functions, which the Azure Functions HTTP trigger is essentially a little API. So you're not having to learn a whole lot to add a new uh, a new type to your, your project list, but at the same time, you're reusing a lot of your existing code and yet you're adding something new with microservices or, or that methodology. So there's some cool stuff there you can do. Now, of course, microservices is much more than that, but that's the start of it. Um, and you know, you can add a lot of things around this as you go, but learn class library as well. Don't forget class library. You should always know class library with backend or full stack. Um, but these right here, I'm going to add class library because it, it's important enough to see it and to say, yes, um, I need to know that too, because if you don't have a grasp on class library, you're going to stroll it back in. You really need to know it. And then this would support your API. This would support your Blazor server. This would support your, um, your other projects. You know, Blazor hybrid is going to go through API, but then that's going to go through your class library. So you're going to need to know class library, how it works. So that's kind of my shortcut process for full stack development. Um, and then from there, you, you branch out into what more you need. All right. So with that, I think what we're going to do next is tomorrow, I'm going to issue a challenge that we're, it's going to test your full stack C sharp skills. So I'm going to say, okay, here's a challenge. I want you to go ahead and build this. And I want you to take that challenge. I want you to prove to yourself what you can do in full stack, but also that's going to help you figure out where your gaps are. Because if you struggle doing it at all, or if you struggle in a certain part of it, that's going to kind of illuminate for you, oh, I need to work on this. And so that's going to make sure that, you know, it, it points out to you what you need to know. And then you can, once you know, you can go learn that. All right. So until then, thanks for watching. And as always, I am Tim Corey.